Ladies and gentlemen, what we have right here is the brand spanking new 2016 Corolla S. And I assume the S stands for sport, but I've been driving it all week, so I thought I would do a little vlog with my son Tommy. Tommy, up for it? Yes. But since it's a Corolla, and since, let's face it, it's not the sexiest of cars, and since we are down here in Arizona and Phoenix, Tommy, why don't we drive it to the Penske Auto Complex, the museum, you know where they have the Ferraris, the Porsches, the Lamborghinis, the Rolls's, what am I missing? Anyway, they have all these supercars, and uh, we each gonna pretend that we just want a million dollars and we get to pick one. So at the end of this video, you guys are gonna get to see some pretty darn cool cars, and that is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Car. You're gonna love this auto complex. It's basically, well, it's basically a giant car dealership, but it's got some of the coolest cars that, uh, well, you could want it all in one place. So it's Great. got Porsches. Wow. Lamborghini. Okay. Rolls Royce. Mini. Yeah, and Mini. Your Mini fanboy, not to mention some other brands. The idea, Tommy, is imagine we just won the lottery and you get to buy one car. So you have to pick one car when you get there. Good? Yep. All right, well, obviously this is a vlog and we're here to review this 2016 Toyota Corolla S. So you got the uh, Monroni there. Why don't you start with some of the facts? How much is the MSRP on this bad boy? Um, so this particular model is 23190 and the color is Blue Crush Metallic. Nice. And how much is the base price? So the base model is 19995 And uh, what are some of the options that we got? We have a power tilt sliding moonroof, and then the driver convenience package, which includes a bunch of interesting things, <coughs> such as a smart key system, um, a radio. Woohoo, we have uh, a radio. <laughs> <laughs> touch screen to split screen display. Nice. Um, yeah. That's uh, some pretty neat stuff. And then, of course, $835 for delivery and handling. You know, Toyota's been trying to kind of up their passion game, right? They've been trying to make cars a little bit more engaging, a little bit more fun. And uh, this Toyota Corolla is one of those cars, so it's a little bit edgier. The interior is a little bit more modern. It's a little bit more chic. It's a little bit more um, cutting edge. It's really nice, actually. Yeah, like um, this little blue line that goes across here. Some nice materials. It's a nice touch. Really good yeah. job. There are still some hard plastics but like up here it's nice and soft uh, the steering wheel is nice and thick you've got kind of this beautiful stitching that makes you feel like you're at the helm of a serious sports car but um, let's face it even with panel shifters there is one thing missing from this vehicle that makes it a spirit a serious sports car it's actually two things right really two things and let me show you what that is right now and demonstrate that as soon as I make this turn the first thing that's missing is <laughs> a stick shift or second best an automatic transmission because even though we do have pedal shifters we do have a CVT yes we do so that's the first thing that's missing of course the second thing that's missing is a lot of power how many horsepower we got so this model produces 132 horsepower and right around the same amount of torque but the cool thing about the Corolla S is it is available in a six-speed manual transmission which yeah. is very neat yeah, 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 and you know, the, the great thing about a CVT, and let's face it, if you're going to use this as a kind of a cool commuter car, you're going to want to look at this number down here. We've been driving it all week, both highway and the city, and we're averaging 31.1 miles to the gallon. Yeah, which, which is, is really good. Which is really good for, let's face it, this is a big mm -hmm. car, right? It used to be at some point that a Corolla was like a small little uh, compact car, but compact cars have now grown into... Well, this is like probably the size of a Camry from two generations ago. Yeah, probably. 
Yeah, yeah. Hey, we should probably talk about the fact that you are wearing maybe one of the last uh, TFL car retro t-shirts. <laughs> yes, was, I am. That was the very first shirt that we designed when we first started TFL car. And for a period of only... Well, it's only about 10 days left on the campaign right now. We're actually selling those shirts. We thought it'd be fun to sell the first design. So if you click on Tommy, yep, or if you click on me, or if you click above, we'll take you to um, our store where you could buy that t-shirt. You could also buy a long sleeve version of it, or if you really want to get funky, you can buy a hoodie for the holidays mm -hmm. for your loved one or for <laughs> yourself and actually have the TFL retro design, and that is design number 001, which means once that campaign, once the sales campaign is over, we're not going to sell anymore. So this is your one and only chance to buy that shirt if you like it. Sure thing. Oh, what does it say on the back, dude? It says sea levels is for wussies, because we, of course, out of Colorado, at our over, um, we are over 5,000 feet of elevation. We're a mile above sea level, dude. Which is great for uh, t-shirts, but not so great for acceleration. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's the one thing I've noticed coming down here to, well, we're not at sea level, but you know, Phoenix is much lower. Uh, cars are so much peppier. Yeah, they are. Yeah, there's a lot more life to mm -hmm. them. So let's get back to this. Um, I've got these paddle shifters, but with a CVT, the first time I drove a CVT with paddle shifters was back when... Uh, your grandma bought the uh, Honda Fit that had the same yes, kind of feature. Yes, does have paddle shifters, yep. Yeah, and so I kind of now I'm in D2, now I'm in D1. You can kind of hear the engine go up, and we go to D2. So it emulates a traditional uh, transmission. So you can pretend like you're, you know, Anton Senna or, you know, Michael Schumacher. I'm dating myself, of course. Or pick your Ferrari driver of choice. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, really... Uh, Try to wring the best out of this car but at the end of the day the car's computer is always going to shift when it thinks it should shift so it'll let you have a little bit of fun but it certainly won't let you redline because there is a red line at 60 100 rpm but you won't go beyond it yep that's true and that's probably a good thing because let's face it most people aren't going to be looking at this thing as a sports car so we should talk about it as a as a commuter car as a, as a family compact car how does it work for you um you know, I think especially in the uh, S model, yeah. this model is very well appointed. Yep. Uh, we have this kind of cool, funky, leather red cloth seating. Yep. The rear seat room is very adequate. Uh, you know, I really, I think the new Corolla especially is a good looking car. I really think they did a nice job with the design. I think it's a good size for the segment. Um, and I really think it's a, a very well-rounded package, especially with the six-speed manual transmission. Yeah, well, let's face it, we're both car guys. and. There's just something about a manual that's much more engaging. And you guys keep asking in your comments, why are we so down on CVTs? Um, and it just removes you. It's like takes you one step away from the driving experience. It makes, oh, there we go. So now it's gonna pretend to shift. It just, uh, it just makes it a little bit less fun. It takes the edge off of it, I think. Yep, I, I completely agree. Hey, so can you do me a favor while we're driving? Can you Google uh, where we're going? Because I, I don't know yeah. where we go from here. So you are in charge of navigation. Yeah, I think it is a good package. I mean, it's certainly uh, the right size. And I just got out of the brand new Civic. Uh, and if I'm being honest, the Civic is just, well, if this is a five on the sportiness scale, the Civic, at least in chassis dynamics, is a nine. They've really nailed that out of the ballpark, getting it, giving it a lot more uh, sharpness, a lot more um, agility. It's a it's a much sportier package. This is a car that looks sporty, but at the end of the day, it feels more like a commuter car, which is not a bad thing. Let's face it, not everybody out here is trying to uh, win the uh, race to work. Yep, that's true. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take 147. Okay. And then keep left at the fork. All right, so we're getting off here and staying left at the fork. Uh, Phoenix is such a beautiful town. I gotta tell you, I've been here uh, for the Thanksgiving holidays and I'm really impressed by, uh, first of all, how many clean cars there are, right? There's no dirty cars here, apparently. <laughs> no, they're all really clean. They're all really clean. And just how tidy and, and, and well-maintained the roads are. Um, I guess that's probably because they don't have frost, right? All right I'm, I'm taking this a little bit more sporty. I'm starting to get a little front end push. The car's not happy, it's leaning over. Those tires are designed more for economy than performance. I'm starting to lose a little bit of grip. Uh, steering is, at best, uh, relatively numb. But once again, this was not designed to, to, to carve corners, but it was designed to get you to work with uh, 30 point now nine MPGs. Uh, look, we're of different generations, right? Yep, you, you for know, sure. You're in college and, and I'm way past it. 
Do you think that this is the kind of car that somebody in college would want? Yeah, I do. I think this is um, a car that's reliable, it's going to be trustworthy, and it has enough technology within it at an affordable price that's going to be appealing to many, many people of my age. Yeah, I kind of look at it as this is the kind of car if I had a daughter I would buy her uh, for college, right? Because it's 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 peppy and fun enough to to not be uh, boring, but yet at the same time it's reliable and uh, sturdy enough to be safe. And I think that's what a lot of people look for. These are certainly uh, first cars for many people. Those lucky enough to afford a brand new first car. Yeah, and I think my only real gripe with this car. Yep. Um, they call it a sport. Yeah, that's. But I don't think there's enough to differentiate it from the um, other models of Corolla. Really? Whether that be the luxury ones or the base model ones. You, you don't think that the blacked out wheels and the... <laughs> No, there is a sport button. Yeah. There is a sport button, that's it. it. Appears Whoa, to... go, no! Oh, sorry. That was too fast. Do not hit the sport button, that is way too fast. Should I hit it again? No. Yeah, no, okay, no. we won't hit the sport button. No, it's too much. <laughs> Well, what does the sport button do? Let me hit the it, sport button. Like, um, All right, here. I'm, I'm going to get in the UQB lane over here. And I'm going to hit the sport button. And let's see what happens when I hit the sport button. And I'm betting the RPM are going to go up. Here we go. Yep, RPM just went up about 500. So basically... Yeah, it basically just changes the mapping, the algorithm that the car is using uh, to kind of tell it where the transmission should be. And it's raising it up. 500 to 1,000 to give you a little bit more power, a little bit more pep, or at least the illusion of a little bit more power, a little bit yeah. more pep, right? The engine is now at 4,000 RPM. Let me take, let me, let me, let me take it out of sport. And now it just dropped to three, two and a half thousand RPM. Right. So, you know, changing the shift points around. But Shift points. Yeah, shift points, yeah. But I think you're absolutely right, Tommy. I mean, this is the kind of car that, uh, uh, well, let's say it impersonates a sports car. Yes. <laughs> For sure. And the other cars in this category, um, you know, there's not, until the Civic Type R comes around, they're all kind of right at this level. The only one that really stands out in my mind that's a little bit different, I would say, is the uh, Mazda uh, 3 yep. and the Ford Focus. Now, the Ford Focus is um, kind of interesting because what Ford did was something I wish they had been doing when I was growing up, and that is they took the European Focus uh, lock, stock, and barrel and just brought it over here. They slapped a little bit more chrome on it, but for the most part, when you buy a Focus here, you're buying the same Focus you're buying in Europe, the same Focus you're buying in China, and that's a good thing because the Focus was engineered and designed for European roads, which includes the Autobahn. Yep. Um, and so it, it's, it's certainly a little bit more uh, planted, a little bit more firmly sprung. It's got that kind of European uh, edge to it, if you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, sure. Now the Mazda 3, that's a really interesting one because I think that is the sportiest of the bunch until at least uh, the Civic Type R comes around or a new Mazda 3 Speed comes around. Uh, that car is definitely set up more for performance and more for sporty driving. Zoom, zoom. Yeah, and I think you mean the uh, Civic Si. Yeah, or, or the Type R. Type R is a little... Type right, the Europeans have that. We don't have it. They have a Civic Type R. We don't get that Right, one. but the, the Type R is above the SI. That's right, yeah, all right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So until the, until the SI comes along, um, then, you know, we'll be kind of stuck with the, I shouldn't say base model. It's the, it's kind of the, the, uh, the popular model. And I'm picking on those cars, uh, not because there aren't other cars in the segment. There's a lot of other cars in the segment because those are the best sellers. So those are the cars that people are most familiar with. Right. Tommy, you're gonna love this place. It's like a giant candy store for big boys. I mean, the brands, the supercars, there must be, and I'm not joking, what, 10, 20, 50 million dollars worth of cars here? Yeah. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. Now, last time we were here, we tried to get in the museum and they wouldn't let us film in there. So, sorry guys, if you're thinking that we're gonna go film in the museum, no we're way. not. We're not, they didn't want us in there. So, uh, we're just gonna take a drive through. Yep. We're gonna describe what we're seeing. If you won the lottery, buy today. Okay. Today, today you can come in and you can say to the salesman, got the money, 
I'm driving us home, so so why don't you pick one? I'm just going to take a really slow ride through here. Um, going through Mini here? Yeah, because I know you're a big uh, Mini fanboy. I sure am. <laughs> yeah. So keep your eyes open, see if there's something you like. Uh, wow, now we're getting into the uh, really cool stuff. Wow. So look at this. Incredible Aston Martin here. Yeah, it's funny when a 6 Series BMW or an SL Mercedes looks uh, cheap. Uh, cheap, yeah, because look at this. You got Vanquish. Aston Martin, Aston Martin, Bentley, 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 Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce. Um, yeah, these Rolls is over here. Uh -huh. Bentley's. 2014 Ghost. Uh, yeah, that's what's cool about Penske. They also do used cars, which is very neat. Of course, not you know Chevy Lumina used cars, but this has got to be the most Bentleys I've seen for sale <laughs> ever. Ever, seriously, ever. Look at that. What? There's probably like 30 of them, just one wow. stacked up right after another. It's incredible, huh? Yeah, two Huracans. Over here we have a bunch of Maseratis, more Bentleys. I, God, this has got to be 50 million, 100, 100 million. Oh, I got. Well, I don't know which way to go because I'm seeing a nine, an 85 911 that's just beautiful over there. Yeah, flat nose there. Oh, look what's coming Oof. at us. Wow. That is stunning. Yeah, that is stunning. Oh. <laughs> you can even hear it. Look at this. A Z06, Z06 on of our course, right. yes. The Ghiblis um, even look a little bit cheap here. Yeah, the Ghibli does look a little cheap, yeah. Which of these cars does not belong here? The Got Ghibli. Ferraris on the left here. Yeah, look at look, look 430s. At this. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm just like a kid in a candy store <laughs> right now. You know what? I'm going to swing around here. Uh, how many Ferraris do they have? Oh. And I have to say, if I was going to buy a Ferrari, it would have to be red. Right? Oh, okay. Jeep. I guess that's your plaything. Oh, look, there's a lifted Jeep next to uh, a G wagon, a G -Wagon yeah. and a Cayenne and another lifted Jeep. Wow. Next to that's a, quite the Jeep there, huh? Yeah, next to a Panamera. And all these Maserati Quattrofortes. I think we have a Super Sports here. I love that color. Look at that. That is so cool. It's like Battleship Gray. Huh. Yeah. Look wow. at this 2012 uh, 911. I think it's a turbo. It's a turbo, it's yeah. It's definitely a turbo. GTR? And a GT. Yeah, GTR, of course. Corvettes. Corvettes. How could you not have a GTR? Are you picking one yet? Still, Still looking. Right? Still looking. Look at There's that color on that Bentley. Yeah. yeah. Oh, those wheels. Those got to be 22s. You know, that's a big thing here in Arizona is um, a lot of custom rims. Look, straight ahead, you see it? Yep. SLS, I SLS, think. SLS, yep. yep. Black SLS way down there. Wow. wow. Jetta. <laughs> Jetta. Is that a TDI? No, it's, no, it's a, a hybrid. hybrid which wow. is a very That's unusual, a very unusual, unusual car, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I got to drive that one when uh, it first came out. Uh, it was an interesting ride. Look, this guy's got his two sons looking at Ferraris. Oh, my. Oh, one son. Wow. Wow. Are you picking one yet? Still looking. Still looking at. Uh, we're heading. Over here to the Jaguar area. I have a brand new XF out from here. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you Prius. Know what? There's a Prius. There is a Prius. You know this XF? I'm gonna get to go <laughs> drive it uh, in a week and a half. Awesome. Yeah. That'll be a great video. Yeah, Stay tuned for that for sure. Yeah, they've really toned it down though. You know, I'm looking at it right now. And I think it looks so similar. You think so? I I really think so. It's yeah. hard to tell it from the old model, huh? Because there's speaking of the old one, it's right there. Scion BRZ. And look, a Camry. <laughs> That's an Avalon. Oh, it's an Avalon. <laughs> All right, he caught me up. XF M6. M6. Let's keep going. Wow. Uh, we're heading in towards XJs. Audi and BMW. You think they got an i8? I'm betting they have an i8. Bet they have an i8. They, they gotta have an i8. What do we have here? A A6s. Yeah, yeah. You gotta not until Fours. you get to the uh, to the uh, ones with a little bit more horsepower. Does it get interesting, <laughs> right? Uh, these are all wow. pretty mundane Audis. I'm looking for something with a little bit more pop to it. I'm not seeing them, I'm just seeing the regular. S350s. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at all the i3s. Well, there's some unique rims on those i3s, those blue. Yeah, those are pretty that cool. That certainly is kind of unique, huh? Yeah, yeah. Certainly unique. Wow. Wow, a lot of them. I wonder how they're selling. They seem to be. <laughs> sevens? Like, they have like, I'd say, what, 20 of these i3s? <laughs> they have this a lot is, of i3s. This, this is a place to have one, too, right? Yeah, for sure. M3, yeah, an M3. Yeah, M3, who cares? M6 again, uh, 650s. Oh, now we're getting into the Porsches. Wow. X4, nice.
one, the lottery, Tommy, and really, this is the car you're gonna pick? Yeah, look at it. So this is a R58 Cooper S Coupe. Um, this is the last year for the Coupe, unfortunately, and the Roadster, R58, R59 model designations. And I love this car. Um, it's a pure mini, it's two-seater, pure British, really great handling, just brilliant. All right, all right, after all that, all those Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Bentleys, you're gonna go for a $30,000 Mini. Yep. All right, I respect that. All right, well, shall we show them the car that I would pick? Yep, let's do it. Looks like they're about to sell your car, but here's my car. Yeah, I know, a Mustang, a 2015 Ford Mustang, but you know what? There's this rule. The second you get behind the wheel of a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, you're a poser, but not behind the wheel of a Mustang. Plus, this is the new model, it's the EcoBoost, and look at that, it's $23,999. And I'm a sucker for a bargain, yes. I know, I could have a Porsche or a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, but this, this is a car that is good looking, it's a car that's fast, it's a car that's fun to drive, and it's a car that I'll never be a poser behind the wheel. And you know what, that's important to me, that really is important to me. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car saying thanks for watching. Tommy, say goodbye. See you later. Are you bummed that your car is out for a test drive? <laughs> no. No? Okay, because we really didn't win the lottery. See you guys next time and thanks for watching. And remember, if you want that t-shirt, click on the link below. I think there's only like a few days left in the campaign. Ciao. Welcome to the Phoenix Auto Show, International Auto Show, go figure. Every year we like to do a fun video from here and this year we thought, you know what, let's do a video that focuses on the top five often overlooked cars. And this, of course, is not one of them. It's the brand new Mazda Miata, but this, this over here is certainly one of them. It's the Mazda 3. And oftentimes when people think of compact cars in this segment, they think Civic, they think Corolla, but they don't think Mazda. And the reason for that is, well, Mazda has a very small dealer network. It doesn't have the publicity dollars, but it does have one hell of a good car. This is probably the sportiest car in this segment. It's certainly the most fun to drive, and it's number five on our list of top five often overlooked cars.